get up there and bring those issues up and lamb blast them for it. Because that's not the place. Never forget this. Cowards use the pulpit to proclaim truth that they're not brave enough to discuss in private. And it's just not the loving thing to do. It's not appropriate at that time. Do you see that? And so, uh, uh, be an example in love and faith. You know, I realize we hadn't had a break, but we're learning discipline, okay? <laughs> faith. Guys, those of us who believe in the sovereignty of God ought to believe in the sovereignty of God with regard to more things than just salvation. We ought to believe in the sovereignty of God when all hells broke loose around us and our life seems to be falling apart. Your faith. I mean, if, if as a minister, the congregation sees you worried about all sorts of things, well, what does that say? Faith is more than saving faith. Do you understand that? It's believing God, not just with regard to the Messiah, but the whole plan that the Messiah is bringing in of His providence in your life, to believe Him for that. So when people see you just literally freaked out, and I have been. I'm not saying that I'm a perfect example of this, but I tell you this, when I'm not an example of this, it is sin. You're going to believe in the providence of God and salvation? Great. Now let that overflow into everything else in your life. Finances, reputation, the, the political condition of a country. Rest. Well, who's going to get elected? Well, I know who's already been elected. God has elected His King and set Him on His holy hill and He scoffs at all the leaders of this world. He laughs when they come together to fight against Him. I mean, if the whole world and everyone who's ever died was resurrected from the dead and it all amassed together the multi-billions of persons armed to the teeth to fight against the Lord Jesus Christ, it would be like a gnat beating its head against a world of granite. He sits in heaven and he laughs. So faith, faith. Now, faith does not mean going out and doing something stupid in the name of Jesus. Like jumping off a cliff and believing he's going to save you. As a matter of fact, you jump off a cliff for no reason at all to prove your faith. I'm going to pray he doesn't do anything to help you. Don't be stupid. But it's just faith. If it is anything else, it is resting, resting, resting in Him. It is resting in Jesus. I think it was Hudson Taylor. I'm not, not sure if this is the exact rendition, but when the Chinese army was taking over, the persecution and the, and the hordes were coming towards the camp, the missionary compound and everything there. That the whole, I mean, all the missionaries were running around just going crazy. What do we do? What do we do? And one of them busted in there into to Hudson Taylor's office and he's just singing hymns. They go, the army's out there. They're loaded. They're going to kill us. They're going to do this. The camp surrounded everything else. And you're sitting in here reading hymns he goes, exactly what do you want me to do? I can't fight them. I can't run. What do you want me to do? I would just as soon meet my death and meet my Savior singing praises to His name if sovereignly He wants to take me. Now at the same time though, when Paul knew they were setting traps for him, they lowered him down a wall and he, he went the other direction. So when you can flee, flee. When there is something biblical you can do, do it. But when there's nothing left, entrust yourself to the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. Learn to rest in Him. I have 
I have trusted God for many things. I have seen our mission lacking one day to have to pay tens of thousands of dollars and not have one dime and one envelope come in the mail and it'd be enough to pay off everything. I've seen it more times than I could shake a stick at. I have a diary that if I read it, you wouldn't believe it. But you know what's sad about it? Although I trusted Him for that, my inward man and my attitude was one of just shaking, stomach, ulcer type of this is it. My wife, Chaddle, said if we had a nickel for every time, I have said, Chaddle, this time it's over. This time it's over. She said we wouldn't have to worry. We could support every missionary on the face of the earth. I just come back into this time. This time it's over. We need $35,000 and we got two days and it's over. Because we're not telling anybody our need. And then it just comes. Now I wish I had met that challenge singing hymns. Most of the time I met it staying up all night worrying and crying out to God when the only thing He wanted me to do was go to bed. I'll never forget just a quick story. Darren Rotman, who used to work with John Green and I in Heart Cry when it was just us three, um, we were praying one time, and I mean it was at that point the worst we had ever co- uh, n- There's never been a time in the history of Heart Cry where the men on the field did not get paid. But many times the one who's, who works on staff would go for weeks and not get paid. But what was amazing is whenever we didn't get paid, we would end up actually being more prosperous than when we got paid. Because we'd go out to our truck and someone had left a... We didn't even know why because no one knew about the need. There'd be a, there'd be a card for Walmart or something to buy groceries. Or there, it was just amazing. So I don't want you to think that we ever sacrificed. But Darren and I were down on our knees and we're crying out to God because the heavens had just shut up completely and um, there was no blessing, there was no support coming in, nothing. And Darren and I were crying out, Oh God, if there is just some sin in our life that's keeping you from blessing us, just any sin that's keeping you from blessing us, please make it known to us. And all of a sudden, after about a half an hour of praying, both of us just busted out laughing. And I looked up at Darren and he looked up at me and he said exactly the same thing I was thinking. He goes, it can't be sin in our life that's cutting off the blessings of God because we were just as sinful a couple of months ago when God was blessing our socks off. Now the point is not making light of sin. The point is we were acting, what we were saying was all the other blessing had come through our piety. Now was there something in our piety that had changed so that you're not blessing us? Folks, that's just not true. You see, it's it's faith. And I love what I think a friend of Jim Eliff said. And that is, God delights in vindicating the confidence of His children. Listen to that. God delights in vindicating the confidence of His children. Now, let's go on. And purity. Not enough said about that, young men, today. Purity. Purity. Just being pure. Sometimes